Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will Munchin on some pizza. You guys caught me mid slice. Welcome in. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming back. Mid slice. It was what a way to phrase it. If you if you hear something um, suspect, that's just me. Pardon me. We'll finish. He's up always here. a bit suspect. Guys, welcome to the episode, episode one sixteen. As always, sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com, the best place to buy, sell, and trade magic cards online. Absolutely love them. They've got a lot of awesome stuff. Go check them out. True dad. Link in the description. Uh, before we get into today's episode and the card of the day, I just want to mention, uh, you may have noticed we did not post a giveaway this past weekend, as we always do towards the end of the month, uh-huh, uh-huh, for a uh-huh. very special reason. Oh, Kevin, um, give it to The us. plan is, throughout the entire month of December... Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're going to be giving away something very, very special, a little bit higher value than we used to, but you're going to have all month to enter, and uh, we might even, we haven't discussed this yet, but we might even find multiple ways for you to enter throughout the month. Uh, So we got to work out some details, but there's going to be a huge giveaway for Christmas, the end of the year celebration. We wanted to make sure that we do something a little special. It's special for everybody, no matter where you come from. Exactly. No matter where you've been, no matter where, dare I say it, you are going. <laughs> so we you want feel to good about that. Special <laughs> of course, I feel good about that. Good. I'm glad somebody does. All right. So here is the deal. We are going to kick this off with our random card of the day in three, two, one. Oh, I know this card. Go for it then. Uh, Narsted Scrapper. So it has got a uh, ability. Pay two, Narstead Scrapper gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. <laughs> Essentially bad fire breathing. It's a 3-3 three, three for five, yep. just so you know. It is a, uh, I mean, this was a, a decent card in Limited during the time. It was never it's something filler. you were, like, excited to pick up, no. but, I but mean. But, like, if you needed something, like, a big, kind of a big-ish, right, not, I like, mean, a fatty, really, but, like, the, he deals damage. That's he deals the thing, is, like, he'll, fire breathing as an ability, which this isn't yeah. technically, it's, Kind of unfair to call it fire breathing, but that's what it mocks, basically. It's like half of fire breathing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, they've... Magic... Excuse me. Wizards, <laughs> through the years, have tried to find ways to make it different. Yeah. To put it on more things, different things. Um, there's like an old blue card with a quote, yeah, unquote, it's fire breathing weird. effect. Like, it, it's it been around, and this is just another version of it. But what you, what you see from cards like that is that in Limited... This card's have some value. Uh, it's got late game relevance. Um, for five mana, it feels pretty bad. Um, but a 3-3 three, three body is, like, is decent. Yeah, it's fine. You know and I mean? the the real, like, the strength of a card like this is the fact that because it's an artifact, it's flexible. It can go into any deck. Right. And so while this isn't going to be your end game that you really, really want, it's going to be filler if you need it to be. And so yeah. late in the pack, you pick it up. It's going to deal some damage, ideally. Yeah. Um, it does die pretty easy, unfortunately, at three. Sure, sure. Um, it will. But ideally, it's going to get in for some damage. What's always important to note with cards like this is that w- during combat, your opponent really has to consider the Scrapper mm-hmm. or any card with Fire Breathing if you have open mana. Um, it makes blo- blocks a little more awkward because do they block with a creature that right. might die if you pump it do they block with something that won't kill it but isn't high value for them yeah leaving you open mana to play with like it there's there's it makes it more complicated the the other kind of benefit to a card like this is that and especially one that doesn't require any specific colored mana is that it is a mana sink late game exactly so if you just don't have anything else to do you just pump this up swing in and hopefully get in for a little a little bit of damage but yeah um or you can play it on defense and do it that way too but either way you have a mana sink in case you just don't have any other options you at least have something to put something into right. um that being said not a great card no i've drafted with it it's never exciting but nope. it it kind of comes in and just does the bare minimum yep it's playable limited but you know yeah basically. um all right cool. well Guys, what a card, so, what a guy. Yeah, yeah. That was a fairly concise card of the day. I had to burp. Oh, God. Disgusting. I just ate pizza uh, I before just ate I pizza. sat down. Do you see me sitting here? Yeah, I've had some ruminating? time to digest in the, the gaseous oh, fair. form. Fair. fair. Uh, shout out to a magic card. Came up. Anyway, guys. If you can uh, fit one more in that's pizza related. That's pizza related? Yeah. 
if you can think of a magic pizza pun, <laughs> I'll be impressed. <laughs> Let me think about it. I, I'm going to have to think about it. If I can come up with one by the end of the episode, I still win. Okay, you gotta so. throw it at me. If I have a better one at the end of the episode. You're going to have a better one. <laughs> well, that's just how this goes. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, okay. <laughs> All that aside, uh, we are mm. finally going to be talking about Ultimate Masters in its entirety. We have yep. all of the cards spoiled, so now Here is the time. They are. Uh, I will say a couple good notes to kick us off because there are going to be quite a few bad ones, I'm sure. There are mm. some very high value cards in this set, which I am very happy yeah. to see. Yeah. Uh, we've already mentioned a lot of those with the box toppers. They were released a number of weeks ago, uh, but they're fantastic cards. I'm really excited to see those. I also, and we'll go into detail about this later on in the episode, but I'm really, really stoked for this limited environment. I want it to be good, and I think, again, I think it looks quite good. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. talk about some of the mechanics, archetypes, things like that that we're going to see as we go through, but we're going to kick it off with the value because obviously we only got to look at the box toppers. I believe it was two weeks ago when we did the episode on that. Now we've got the full set, we've got commons, uncommons, everything. The point that we made at that time was that we felt the common and uncommon slot needed to have a good bit of value similar to the original Modern Master set Mm -hmm. that was going to actually justify or at least attempt to justify the price of, what, 335 MSRP, something like that? Yeah, whatever Uh, Which is just insane. Um, And, Will, how do we feel about that? Um, I believe what what I said to you the other day was, isn't it... A resounding meh. Yeah. Was that was that? That the was exact the exact th- phrasing that you yeah. <laughs> you laid it out to me with. Yeah, it is a resounding meh. Mm-hmm. I mean, so okay, we'll talk about some. There are some really decent, yeah, commons and uncommons. Absolutely. None of them though are super pricey. I didn't realize this got downshifted. By the way. Yeah. Um, was it rare before? Yeah. Oh. We're talking about lab maniac. Uh- that was rare. You're right. Yeah. Man, shout outs. Um, <laughs> so there are some really decent playable on commons and uncommons, which is good to see. Like, uh, there are some of these cards, but very few compared mm. to past master sets that I feel like aren't relevant right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, E-Witness, Lava Spike, Devoted Druid. Like these these are cards that we need. <laughs> right? These are Golgari cards. Thug is actually one that yeah. I'm really stoked to see just because... It only ever really had like two, one major printing and yeah. one other. A Crow and Crusader, just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we'll touch on that in a sec. But like, Slide of Hand, Shriek Moth, yeah. Faithless Looting. Like these are these are cards that modern needs, loves. Yeah. Um, these are cards that Popper wants in some some cases here. Mm-hmm. Um, like good stuff. That being said, I really don't see much value in these slots right yeah so the problem i see is like some of these cards are three to five dollar cards some of them might be even more but what's really important to think about is how do the prices actually end up after this set is released because you look at a card like golgari thug Mm. as the example just because i was just talking about it it's a card that's played in a singular deck and it's very important to that deck but that's the only deck that it's played in yeah and the only reason it has a price point of i don't know like four or five bucks whatever it was at um, it's because it just hasn't had a reprint yet. Right. So now you're giving it the reprint, and that's fine, but there's no long-term value in something like that. Like, Ewit, maybe, because Ewit is always going to be a good card in a number of different decks. Yeah. So I think that there's some Absolutely. stuff there. I think even cards like Lava Spike, we'll see a dip in price, but it's just a fantastic card for any red deck, so we'll probably see it keep some price Yeah. Um, or I'd some value. That. But, like, a lot of these cards are going to just dip, like, hardcore as soon as the set release, or, or is released, excuse me. And so I I don't see long-term value. I see some value just in looking at the set as it is now. But long-term, I'm not so sure about it. Yeah, I mean, I could agree with that. I um, think that there's plenty in here that, I mean, again, I don't need to say it. Yeah. What I just said. Yeah. Refer to my previous comment. Yeah. There's some good playables. There's quite a number of them, honestly. But um, I will say, too, the rare and mythic slot, pretty impeccable. Oh, I mean, we, yeah, we, yeah. we touched I mean, on that. We touched on most of these rares and mythics because we had a lot of them like two weeks ago. But yeah. cards like Gorio's Vengeance, great card. Glenelydra. Uh, 
Yep. Glenn Alentra, I love. Uh, Life from the Limbs in there, obviously. Yeah. Demonic Tutor. All the, a lot of these we've already talked about. But Bridge, Bridge from Below. Yeah. Golgari Grave Troll. I mean, lots Goyf. of cool stuff. We get stuff. another Goyf. Yeah, we get Goyf again. How do you feel about this art on Goyf, by the way? I don't like it. I don't really don't like it. it. This I'm, is more like classic, you know, classic magic. Yeah, history, right? a little bit. Definitely. Like, I will say, and this might actually be the unpopular opinion from what I've heard. Mm. Uh, a mm. lot of people didn't like the OG art on Goyf, from what I've it gathered. It was very confusing to look at. It was confusing to look at, but I, I actually like that the most. Huh. I know that's really weird. But I mean, like, yeah, it's it's super just strange. Like, which I understand. I'm not trying to justify by any means, but you know, I'm just saying. Wait, what you trying to do, homie? I'm trying to spell Tarmogoy. You spell good. <laughs> Can I just do that? Will it search that? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. We're pulling it up on Scryfall because apparently we felt the need to. That is your favorite goy? Yeah, isn't that weird? Because it's not good art. Not really, at least. Where even is its face? Well, that's the thing. I think a lot of it has to do with the OG card frame, too. I like the Planar the Chaos card dope. frame. Yeah. The frame is off. I, up until now, did not realize there's a little person in what I think is his hand. Yeah, definitely. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's a lot of people's favorite. The Modern Masters version. Anyway, we're off cool. topic. Sorry, um, sorry. Magic anyway, yes. Pretty. The rare and mythic slot has a lot of value. Mm. On the onset, I think the uncommon slot looks pretty solid, but I think long term it's going to dip a lot. I think the common slot just doesn't really have that much in terms of no. value. No. Uh, I think there are playable cards. I mean, there are certainly like Slippery Bogle is a card that needed probably a reprint, I guess, but like well, see, not because of value. It just is like a card people want to play with. So cool. Yeah, yes and no. Um, I mean, that it, Bogles is always going to be a deck, right? Hexproof yeah. is always awesome. a thing in modern. Um, and popper and popper sure 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 um but like it's really cheap to build oh and yeah the pieces I mean, aren't super hard cheap. to find definitely uh shout out to card sphere um yeah go go check these cards out on card sphere.com <laughs> yeah, but honestly like i don't <laughs> i don't know that it necessarily needed quote unquote the reprint. yeah i don't i yeah i mean in terms of value no, no it didn't because it is a cheap deck to build well, although but, but think twice cruise mm -hmm. wild mongrel at the common slot. Even Wicker Bow Elder is a card that sees like a lot of cube play and stuff. Yeah. Just because it's a fun little artifact hate card. It's just interesting, right? Um, but yeah, okay. I don't know. On the onset, I do think the set looks cool, but I don't think it's justified at its price point. No, the price is so strange to me. I don't like respect at all mm -mm. marking it up like that. Now, I think that's a bad decision. I, I do think it's a bad decision. I think that at the end of the day, mm -hmm. like it's worth that price for people to Probably. buy into it. Like you will get your money, you will get your value, you will get some quality cards paying mm. that price. Yeah. The set. But I mean, it does hedge a lot of people out. Now, mm -hmm. this is gonna sound crazy coming from me, but that was Alpha Investments point. Yeah. Mr. Um, you never agree with him. No, never. I don't. <laughs> Quite frequently. Yeah. Um, because I don't always respect the business decisions that Wizards takes. Right. Makes. Yeah. Words are hard. Um, <laughs> but his point was that at the end of the day, the, there's value in the set. Oh, yeah. Like, people will make their money, and the people who can make the money will, and they'll be happy with it. I just think that the majority of folks who would want Will to buy... not afford... They just can't. Right. Not a box, anyway. No. A couple packs. I mean, that's the thing. Like, the pack lottery is way more fun now, um, just because there's a lot better rares and mythics. It's like... Around. It's a high floor, high ceiling scenario, right? Because mm -hmm. you theoretically... Mm -hmm. I mean, you open a pack and you pull a Liliana, it feels amazing. Heck yeah. You open a pack and you pull, what, like a Seismic Assault? <laughs> Fair. Cool. Seize the deck. Or, like, Revelark. I mean, I love Revelark, but it's not, like, a high-value card. You no. know what I mean? So, like, they're, it's the high-ceiling, high ceiling, high, uh, high floor scenario yeah. or low floor. And there, and there always is. Yeah. There always is with sets. There's I mean, that's the cards. idea, right? right? That's the point. It's just, like... The ceiling, I feel, though, is just higher this time, right? The ceiling's higher. The floor is about as low as it has been in the past, in my opinion. Um, Yes and no. I mean, there's cards here that people haven't seen for a long, long time, I think. Like... Visions of Beyond is dope. Yeah, it's a cool card. Uh, Definitely. I, I mean, I bought people. a bunch of them on Cardsphere.com recently. Hey, yo. If you're interested. 
<laughs> I mean, that's like I really a, did. The, the, that's like a modern a great card. dread or not dredge scheme. It's a mill card. That's what I meant. Yeah, which is fine, but like because it's a mill card, it doesn't see that much play. <laughs> I know, but it's it's so good. Like <laughs> oh in, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's deck. ancestral, right? Exactly. I mean, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly, it's so good. Uh, so there's cool <laughs> cards like that that like call back to a lot of things. It's yeah, what, buried what, alive. I think is yeah. a cool included uncommon. I think that's what, awesome. One thing I don't. Like, I'm confused about. Yeah. So, with a lot of master sets in the past, we've had kind of themes to go off of, right? Yeah, there doesn't really, there's I not really a theme. I don't know what the theme is this time. I don't, I don't know what the theme is. It's just value. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, right? Like, yeah. there's archetypes, obviously, for draft, which is fine, but that's a separate thing. This is themes throughout the set, oh, and they're this really. Used to be mythic. Yeah. Sublime Archangel. Sublime Archangel. Um, but there, there really isn't just a common theme throughout this. No. I mean, it is a master set, so I would expect that less so than in like well, a normal set. Well, the last few we've gotten, right, have been they've like been iconic masters. Yeah, and, uh, like there's a little bit of a there's modern master. This is just kind of all over the place. But yeah. um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where all these things land. Um, I know online box prices are going for way cheaper than MSRP, or at least they were. Oh, uh, they were under the three hundred dollar mark for uh, sure. What? How many did you buy? Uh, <laughs> I haven't bought any. I'm buying Christmas presents for people. Do you want to buy me a box of Ultimate Masters for Christmas? Uh, I know you got a baby on the way, but priorities. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but right. yeah. So that's okay. So our take on the value. There's a lot of it there. Mm-hmm. Still not justified the price point. Is that correct? Um. Yes, asterisk. If you can afford it, you should buy it. Yes. Um, Fair enough. Other than so, that, though, yeah. Let's now move on to drafting. Cool, what do we cool, think? Cool. I think it's actually going to be really good. I think it will be too. Um, green black. Green black looks just on the onset. F- yeah. I almost made this not family friendly. Ah, worst things have happened. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's going to happen eventually. <laughs> awesome. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost every black card is like <laughs> a graveyard yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. Like done. Uh you've got chase things, obviously like throw mag angler. Um where did that card go? Tasker's in here too. Yeah, rare. Tasker's in here. Really Mona the unhollowed. A lot uh, of reanimator, a lot of dredge, yeah. a lot of flashbacks. It's just nuts. Bridge is in here. Like, Bridge, yeah. There's so, dredge for days. Like everything I don't know. Green black seems amazing. I am stoked that they brought Dredge back for two reasons. One, I like Dredge as a mechanic because it's sturdy and, you know. Um, yep, yep, yep. And I'm a bad person. But uh, <laughs> what's also really funny, I think, is that we... Because I talked to, like, Tyler and I talked to a lot of people about Guilds of Ravnica and they were like, dude, how cool would it be if they brought Dredge back? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, but they won't. Like, right. they've said that they will not. Right. So there's it's no way that that's actually going to happen. But a month later or two months, whatever it's been... They bring Dredge back. I'm well, stoked for that. But they don't. But they right? don't. I mean, like, I get it. But, like, they reprint a lot of these Dredgers yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I'm stoked. And they did... Something they got right was they picked a lot of the good pieces from a lot of decks. They're just weird decks. Sure. So, like, That's you look at, like, Dredge, which is not a... I mean, it's a good deck. But, like, it's not... These cards only fit in Dredge. You know right. what I mean? Like, there's Grave Troll, Life from the Loom, which arguably fits in, like, the lands only legacy deck and stuff like that, but it's a Dredge deck. Um, Golgari Grave Troll, great for Dredge. Not really good anywhere else. Bridge from Below, same way. Right. You look at, like, uh, the Enchantment deck, which is obviously a big archetype in this. You get all the Umbras, which are important in only the Slippery Vogel deck. You get the Slippery Vogel. You get the yeah. Daybreak Coronet. All of those cards are great only in that deck you get conflagrate conflagrate whatever which is Is only good in like ad nauseum like that's the only (laughs) that's the win con for ad nauseum but it's the only deck that it ever gets played in (laughs) this guy here yeah I think it's conf- I that goes in a singular deck and I don't know if it's ad nauseum or not I apologize how could it be I don't Look, look, look. Let me let me just look. I don't think it's ad nauseum, right? Conflagrate. I'm looking this up. There is I'm the sorry. win there is, is the win con. It's a big red card, you're right, but I don't know if there it's is a hundred percent a deck that this goes in and I can't think of it. Guys, I feel really dumb. It's fine. Well he looks it up. I'll just talk about a few yeah, other talk about it. Um there's 
I mean, some fun stuff, and then some kind of weird stuff. One strange choice to me is going kind of a callback to Theros, generally regarded as a set that wasn't good. Like, most people didn't think so. Theros Limited was okay. But Theros in general kind of made standard... That that stands out in my mind as the standard that kind of split people, like, heavily. Um I'm not paying any attention to what you're saying, by the way. You're fine. I'm, I'm talking to the people. Yeah, I know. So you do... It is ad nauseum. I was right. Is that the card for ad nauseum? Yep, that's the wing con. It's the big... I, there's I a big so. red card, but... Cause you I can't thought even, I was not incorrect, but... Oh, yeah, because you draw your deck and discard Oh, and Spoils from the Vault, also ad nauseum. But those are the, that's the only deck yeah. that those cards are played in. I and mean, we're back. We're, and Kevin's back. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's also, like... Sorry, guys. I'm totally interrupting whatever the heck Will was talking about. Um, it's not important. There's also life gain cards. Uh, Martyr of Sands, that only gets played in Soul Sisters. Right. Obviously, cards like Gurmag Angler get played in a number of decks. But yeah. really, like, you know. Um, Lab Maniac, also Ad Nauseum. Uh, ad Nauseum or uh, your dumb vintage deck. Doomsday. Oh, Doomsday. <laughs> True. But they're like... They're cards that are really good that they're getting a reprint, yeah. but it like only I for remember, certain things. This is the <laughs> like, cool thing about about master sets. I remember when Forbidden Alchemy was spoiled and people like yeah. went nuts because it's a good card. It's, it's a really good card. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like people pooed their pants. Yeah, I remember Brad Nelson like <laughs> talking to God. Who was it? Ah, <laughs> oh, who was it? He was trying to convince someone how good it was, and the other guy was like. No, you know, I I know it's good, but like, how good could it be really? And Brad's yeah, yeah. like, no. Listen. <laughs> Listen. It's awesome. Um anyway, uh, all, all I was saying yeah. was uh there's some interesting callbacks, some interesting uh limited archetypes in here. Yeah. Heroic, I think, is a strange one, just personally. Yeah, that's like, a weird call. It wasn't like why. As someone who has played <laughs> Who tried to make it good? Well, good in constructed. It was decent in limited, but yeah, it was fine. I I tried it in limited. I fell in <laughs> love with it. Tried it in constructed. Went back and played it in limited because it's the only place it should be played. <laughs> like, I have died on the hill of heroic so many times. Um, it's not that good of a mechanic. No, it's not. It's really not. It is. It is so weak to removal. Like. Yeah. In a big way. The Umbras help a ton, but... Yeah, definitely. I think in tandem with those, well, it'll be a fun mechanic, or a fun archetype. Well, but that's like, the thing, is it kind of goes in the, like... It, it fights with the hexproof creatures for priority yeah. of enchantments and stuff, so it's yeah. hard to say that it, like, goes in those colors, but that's the only color it works yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, So, like, you have red-green heroic, I suppose, but those were kind of juxtaposed deck styles as well. Yeah. Whereas you want to, like, stick your board with heroic creatures... Mm-hmm. Uh, in green and make a bigger, but in red you wanted to get like a really profitable heroic combat phase. Yeah. All that to say, um, that's one archetype. Uh, uh, Reanimator's a big one. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously Entomb, Reanimate, Buried yeah. Alive. There are a ton of really, really good things for Reanimator. Uh, right. That doesn't necessarily have to be the black green deck, but obviously black is going to have to play a part mm-hmm. in that. Um, but Flashback and Reanimator, I think, are going to be semi like. They can kind of share a lot of things, which is going to be really cool. Sure. Uh, Madness is also a big part of this set, which I think is cool, um, which works pretty well with Reanimator. Um, just in that we've got a few kind of Madness enablers and things like that. Uh, Wild Mongrel being one of the biggest, I think, for that deck. Well, yeah, Wild Mongrel is just a, a stud of a card. Yeah, it's fantastic. Just a, a, way to say that in a great way. Um, very much. <laughs> Uh, there's also Spells Matters. Uh, we've got mm-hmm. Talrand as well as Young Pyro, uh, both fantastic just token generators, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of recursion uh, in blue for certain instants and sorceries, things like that. Uh, so I'm stoked to see how that deck plays out. I th- imagine that's going to be primarily is it, obviously, but I'm sure we'll be able to splash black and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, um, Just standard control and blue-white flyers is obviously going to be a thing too, right. but... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things. The It's funny to me because the mechanics are like really either good or really not exciting. 
And by not yeah. exciting, I mean heroic being really the only one. But like, right, right. Flashback, love flashback. I don't it's know. Great. I don't. I'm not excited about hexproof either. Even though I recognize but I don't it think as a it's like heroic mecha- or a limited mechanic. Yeah, but I don't think it's like. I mean, slippery bogle has hexproof, but the other ones are really just the heroic cards. It's not like full on a hexproof archetype. Yeah, I guess I'm. I Do you just know what think I mean? of that because like a lot of the cards are in it. Yeah, in which I mean, I get. But definitely. you're right. You're right. There but like, are, really, that's the only one that's like hardcore hex yeah, proof right. um is. but yeah i i mean yeah. flashback i love i really really love dredge i really love uh madness evoke is even in here which i love mm-hmm. evoke too um oh, boneyard worm was was oh tasty. It's, and there's spider spawning boneyard worm like that entire draft deck is in here mm-hmm. and it's that deck is insane that's one yeah. of the we i think very recently had an innistrad flashback draft on mtgo that ah. people played and i was watching uh Numat the nummy or kenji or whatever he's good um he's so freaking good it's annoying uh but he uh it was either him or lsv but they pulled off the there's like an actual infinite combo and they were able to pull it off and with triple him? innistrad with the, it's with uh spider spawning you just are able i don't know if it's full infinite but it's like you can repeat spider spawning over and over instead of just the normal two times right and it's insane. How do I know about this? I don't know. But at some, you're able to put spider spawning back in your deck, basically. And then... Back in your hand, right? It's either your hand or your deck. But either way, you are able to just Ugh. keep spider spawning. It's stupid. Um, Every time I pass Dauncharted Warrior, I get a little bit sadder. <laughs> because... Oh, Basking Root Wall is also an enabler for uh, yeah. Madness, by the way. Um, but yeah, so a lot of interesting cards. I do think draft wise, it's going to be a fun set. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work out yet, obviously, but we'll see. I'm I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah, I think we can kind of. Well, that's kind of unfair to say, but I was going to say you can hedge probably that green black is going to be one of the most powerful. Yeah, but that being said, it's bombs like aren't necessarily bomby. It just is all really fluid. Like, it all enables each other, Mm -hmm. but if... It's high synergy. Right. But how... I honestly think Is It Spells Matters would be insane if you get the right cards. If you, like, pull a Talran pack one and then get past even one or two young Tyras... It's like Blue Flyers, though. Yeah, I mean, that's what it amounts to. But, like, it's so powerful uh, to just be able to get two-for-ones on your spells always. Oh, sure. sure you know sure, what sure, I mean? Sure. So, like, that just sounds great to me. <laughs> like, hell yeah. I mean, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. It uh, happened. Um, yeah. I was going to say, so... I think very often we're going to see three color also. I think you kind of have to. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about flashback, there's so much good stuff in white. Yeah. Uh, that there's good stuff in all the colors for flashback, which is weird. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Doi. We just passed a bunch for blue. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so many good things. Like red aggro is vexing devil. Honestly, on the spike. just kind of a archetype on its own. Yeah. Bale fire dragon is probably the right best. Bomb shred freak. <laughs> limited. Honestly, you play it in that deck though. Uh yeah. It's I played a great Ra- aggro. Card. I played a ton of Shred Freak in uh, Return to Ravnica. In draft. Return to Ravnica, it was one of the best two drops, just uh, in yeah. an aggro deck. But yeah. like, I, I played, don't know about this. I, one. <laughs> okay, this goes against kind of what I say often. But I played Jund in Limited because there were so many good like <laughs> aggro cards in those colors. I mean, yeah, there are because you get a lot Dude, of the uh, Dreg Mangler, Practor Shred Freak, yeah, Tackling Devil, yeah. The little one one with the undying surprise he's a two two slither head <laughs> oh it's good it was good that was that was a crispy time yeah um okay so is there any final summation you want to say about this i want to say set? this i hate the price right i do think it's going to be a fun set yeah. if you can get your hands on it i think it will be a successful limited set if it's not a successful overall set, mm. it's only because of the price point. Because there's so much value in here at the rare and mythic slot, it's stupid. Yeah, you're right. Um, I also really like one thing that I wanted to mention really quick. Uh, they downshifted Noble, not downshifted, but like put it back at rare. 
uh, in this set. Hmm. I'm so happy they did that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we need a lot of We need Noble, Noble Hierarch. Hierarch. That's it's, like one of the cards, one of the few cards in this set, I feel like, that spans a butt ton of decks. It does. And it's finally just at rare again. <laughs> it's like, yeah. thank you, finally. That's the thing, is it's played in every format it's legal. One. Yeah, and it's like, always like four of. Yeah. You always have to i mean vintage maybe like oh uh, yeah but, but vintage is so weird what forget like it. maverick and stuff like that yeah forget vintage like <laughs> where, where you're not I, playing it anyway if you're listening to us <laughs> uh, so for modern there are tons of decks that use noble hierarch yeah even even spirits uses noble hierarch like right <laughs> fan so spirits many, loves it yeah so many decks have noble hierarch and we haven't seen it in years like uh, at the rarity no, period, right? Like it wasn't. Didn't we see it in some masters, modern masters? Wasn't something it the first earlier. one though? It was another one too. I think it was in the second one. I thought it was I'm, only I'm positive first. it's in the second because it's on the pack art. Well, it's only in one though. Well, it's definitely in the second, mm-hmm. the 2015 version. We might be misleading the audience again. We do that a lot. Good thing we have a computer here yeah, that you guys get to listen to us looking up stuff. It's always great. Uh, and him misspelling things. <laughs> Uh, Conflux 2015 and then Ultimate Masters, yeah. Well, Conflux was when it was, yeah, that was OG printing, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was only in it's just the 2015, right? Yeah, but can we bring Exalted back as a Exalted was sweet? I like Exalted, it's loads of fun, it is loads of fun. Uh, it's real weak, late game, (laughs) true. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to say before we move on to our cracker packs? Uh, I don't know. I love all these cards. Um, it looks fun. It's just, if you can afford it, go for it. If you can't, then don't. I will say this. As a word of advice, I never give financial advice because I'm the worst person in the world to give financial advice. Uh, okay. I just dip into whatever I feel like dipping into. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you cannot more than any other set if you cannot afford this set don't go out of your way to find a way to afford this set please don't what is this oh (laughs) someone (laughs) oh Um, Oh, that's too good so yeah kevin keep talking about your important stuff no that's all i wanted to say it's not that important i just Kevin's a lot of right. people go like, out of their way to like try and afford a good set like this because they're like, oh, I'll sell a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff and try and buy this set. And that's fine if you can sell stuff, whatever. But if that's what you yeah. need to do to get this set, maybe you should just save the money from selling off your stuff. Well, and the other thing is, if there's... I would say if there are cards you're looking for that you want to get that are printed in this set, it's not worth no, buying, just obviously. buy you the go, singles. Right. Always. The prices are... I mean, stay on top of it. Once the prices dip. They're going to dip... I th- my assumption is, and again, I'm not the financial guy, so I don't know, but my assumption is they're going to dip pretty quickly and then sort of steadily come back up. Um, I might be wrong. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the card. Like, yeah. I, I think Lily will do that. Snapcaster has done it in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of climb back up to where it historically has been. Um, Goyf, not so much, but thank I think Goyf yeah, might actually kind of head back down a little bit now it, because it's already been heading down anyway. Well, it should, right? You look yeah. at the meta, it's not played as heavily as it used to it's be. It's not as good in modern anymore. Exactly, exactly. Um, Thanks, so, Fatal Push. Way to be there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Fatal Push as well is kind of seeing kind of a, an autumn. A little bit. You know what I mean? A little bit. Just because, I don't know. Yeah, spirits is rough. It changes a lot. Yeah. Because of that one freaking selfless spirit. Yep. The destructy guy. The destructy guy. <laughs> you gonna fatal push selfless spirit? Good, he's gonna die anyway. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Way to be there. Um, yeah. Anyway, just a tidbit of advice, but the set does look pretty fun. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I don't know how much of it I'm gonna end up getting because it is stupid Hopefully expensive. Buckets. Hopefully buckets of it. Buckets of it. That's the goal. Hopefully not. There's so much junk you don't want. Yeah, it. that's the thing. Just buy the singles, Kev. Don't waste your time. I have to buy some boxes well, for the channel. Yeah, there's so many good lands. And I want box hoppers. I mean, to be fair. Mana Vault. Yeah, I love that Mana mm. Vault's in here. OG art Mana Vault. And Raccoon. 
really sweet. Ulmug. Um, Kuzleeks. <laughs> I'm just renaming all the Eldrazi. All right, cool. Anyway, um, all right, we've rambled long enough, I think, about yeah. Ultimate Masters. I think we have. Um, yeah, we just thought it would be timely to talk about that because here we are. Is this loud in your ear? You little rascal. Uh, we have Do our gold cards. Hurt our friends. Uh, I should say first, this is sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam. Uh, <laughs> definitely check their links out in the description as well. But we do, of course, have our gold mm. cards. Hmm. And mine is Dark Amoeba, and I didn't get it. I got Runaway Steamkin. Hey, yeah. Mine is Night of Autumn, because it's a great card. Um, obviously. Obviously. Which you So, did I got with. Mausoleum Secrets, which is a good card. Mausoleum Secrets? I don't remember what it does. It's good for constructed, not for limited. Um... Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your yard. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. It's Tutor. Oh, um, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that card, actually. So I'm looking for some... So I actually think I'd pick Runaway Steamkin. Um, it's a really good card, just in general. Yeah. And it does great work 100%. in limited. Uh, Price of Fame is another great card. Uh, it's just really efficient removal, and it surveils, too. Love it. It would never wheel, but I think I'd pick Runaway Steamkin. Um, I'm gonna go with the Crater Maker. I don't have any other removal. Yep. Um, and Crater Maker is a solid two two for two, which is a nice body. Sure. Uh, and he gives me some uh, options to sack him if I need to. Flexibility is good. Yeah. So Crater Maker is dope. Cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. I think I'm. I think I'm satisfied. Yeah. Um, that's always the goal is to satisfy you, Will. Oh well. You're good. <laughs> Family friendly. Um, yes. So, guys, hopefully you were excited about uh, Ultimate Masters as well. Let us know if you get your hands on some of it uh, and draft, do whatever. Let us know what kind of decks you're running. Um, bit of a spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. Uh, part of the giveaway is going to include some Ultimate Masters. I don't know how much, but uh, everybody has been saying we want Ultimate Masters. We actually went out to you guys and asked what you guys would want and a lot of you said ultimate masters so we're going to put some in there but we want to mix it up a little bit and give some variety uh instead of only giving ultimate masters packs will how's that pizza that you're eating buddy Pretty good. <laughs> uh anything else now that you have pizza in your mouth that you want to talk about before we uh head out yeah um where's that pizza bun i didn't have one mm. interesting yeah. Well, I, I think I have one. Papa Carn. I don't know. <laughs> Papa Carn's pizza. The best topping on pizza. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> the cheese stands alone. All right. Fair no, enough. No. It was a, I was trying to think of a pun. I just remember. <laughs> I love this. Okay. Side note here. Oh yeah, story time. Let's do it. The cheese stands alone. Yeah, is the most depressing magic card in the world because it's based off of a game that was played in like I don't know England or some crap back when they like you know played Ring Around the Rosie, pocket full of posies, blah 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 blah. Okay. Hit like hoops with sticks. And yeah. Stuff. Good time. You know when they couldn't play games. Yeah. So the cheese stands alone is a game designed to pick. A loser and that's it it's like it's designed to find the kid that's picked last but then there's no game after that <laughs> that's the whole freaking game that's really funny and the kid who's picked last is the cheese <laughs> everyone else sits down that's why it's the cheese stands alone <laughs> and then they go into the middle of the circle and all the kids laugh at them that's the whole game <laughs> I want to get, like, as many copies of this card as I can get. You have some, I think. Do I? <laughs> no, I don't have the cheese stands. I don't have many unglued cards. I have a lot of unhinged, and I have a lot of uh, unstable. I have a butt ton of unstable. I love the flavor text, too, for this. Yeah. <laughs> the meat, on the other hand, has no frequent visitors. Has uh, frequent visitors, excuse me. I love this. Yeah, it's hilarious. Way to be there. Mm. Good joke. Uh, I wanted to talk about something I learned yesterday What's that? that has absolutely nothing to do with magic. Um, Will and I 
got to experience a uh, rock band together last night. And I just want to mention how funny it is <laughs> to watch a grown man, uh, grown-ish, All right. play the same song. How many times was it? <laughs> like, I think I gave up after four. It was more than four. You're talking about the Disturbed song? Yeah. Prayer? I think it was like five or six. At, I mean... It could have been. I kind of blacked out. Yeah. You got so frustrated. Um, I was entertained. This has nothing... You can leave at this point if you want to, guys. This is just oh. me because I enjoy this. Like, uh... It was so funny. Why we got to use that orange note? That's all I want. <laughs> What's that doing there? What's the point? It's, We're not actually playing guitar. Just stick with four notes. That's all we need. Four buttons. Done. It's too easy. Nah, just make them like, you know. Real fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make a real guitar. Anyway, I just thought it was funny. That has no real relevance, but. You know I rocked. Oh, yeah, totally. The same song six times. It was a good time. At, after, you know, all my attempts, I think we, we heard the entire song. Uh, like, like it's a disturbed song. Like how different. Yeah, I mean, collectively we heard the whole song. Exactly. <laughs> Probably more than once. Uh, nah, some no, of them maybe not. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we're gonna get out of here. This is just degrading at this point. I'm gonna um, download the image for you, by the way. Please don't. Please don't. Uh, guys, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you so much for watching this episode on Ultimate Masters. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let us know what draft decks you come up with. All that jazz. Uh, but until next week, we are leaving to eat pizza and nerds. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. What'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs>